Welcome to the March 25th Board of Education meeting. The time is 6.30, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. If you are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. Lavelle, if you could please do a roll call. Yes. Mr. Doring. Here. Mrs. Passaretti. Here. Mrs. Reynes. Here. Dr. Reed. Here. Ms. Regan. Here. Dr. Roscoe. Here. Mr. Ross. Here. Mrs. Rosacci. Mr. Votto. Here. Nine members present and voting. Thank you so much. And now one of the highlights. Um, of all of our board members, of all of our board meetings, the student reports. So I'd like to invite Haley to come up from Lyman Hall, please. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having us again tonight. So March started off, sorry, um, February, with the cap and gown ordering extended to the 6th. And then on March 1st was the last day that the course selection would happen for the underclassmen. And then there was an integrated preschool teacher job shadow on the 5th, there was a first grade teacher job shadow along with the sports signing day after school. On the 6th, there was an advisory day which followed a special bell schedule. The 7th was the National Honor Society induction ceremony. The 12th was the Choices Matter program. The 13th, we had no school for the staff, staff development day. The 14th, there was an Iron Workers Union job shadow and the military fair at the during lunch waves. The 19th, there was the Unified Theater performance, which was themed movie night. The 20th, we had office hours, which followed a special bell schedule. And there was, that was the Unified Theater performance snow date. The 21st, we had a two hour, well, we will have a two hour early release following a special bell schedule and the real estate job shadow. The 26th, the quarter will end. And the 27th is the SAT day for the grade for the juniors, which will also follow a special bell schedule for everyone else involved. The 28th, there's a late bus. And the 29th, we have no school due to Good Friday. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much exciting, uh, so many exciting things happening with all the job shadowing. It's really exciting as we think about the next chapters. Now from Mark T. Sheehan, Leah and Emma, welcome. Hey, thank you guys for having us again tonight. I can't believe we're almost already at April in the school year. Um, starting April 1st, we have the SEC Scholar Leader Awards Dinner. Um, April 1st through April 5th, we, it is going to be National Assistant Principals Week. April 2nd, we have a PTAC meeting in the Connecticut Associate, Associates of Schools Arts Award Dinner. On April 3rd, we'll be following an advisory bell schedule. On April 4th, it's a half-day schedule due to parent-teacher conferences, which will be held from 12.30 p.m. to 2.15 p.m., and it's also the SAT testing makeup day. On April 5th, report cards are going to be available in Power School. April 8th through April 12th is spring vacation. And April 16th is special resources fair held by PPS. On April 17th, there will be department meetings in our school. And that night, there will be a summer and part-time job fair at the Hubcap in Wallingford. On April 24th, students who choose to can take the seal of biliteracy test. April 7th through April 13th is National Library Week, and the theme this year is There's More to the Story. April 22nd through April 26th is National Student Leadership Week. April 23rd, our school will have its Varsity Scholar Recognition Ceremony at night. On April 24th is Administra Administrative Assistant Professional Day. On April 25th, we'll have early release due to um, department meetings. On April 26th will be the Superintendent Student Award Recognition Luncheon. And then on April 30th, we'll have one book, one Wallingford author event at the Wallingford Public Library. Additionally, I'd just like to mention that two of our sports teams for winter sports made it to the state championships. And we're really proud of all of our winter sports and their seasons have come to an end. And our spring sports have just begun and we're very excited for the seasons. Thank you. Thank you so much to the two of you. So many exciting things happening and congratulations to our winter sports. Amazing, amazing job this season. Um, it was really exciting to follow some of those final games that really ended in nail biters. So really exciting. We look forward to the spring athletes as well. 
moving on, we are going to um, look at some presentations and awards. So Superintendent Belizzi, I will pass this over to you. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, this evening, we're gonna start with recognizing our retirees for this year. Um, so I just wanna say a little message to all of our retirees before we go ahead and get started. So as you move on to the next chapter in your educational journey, I wanted to take an opportunity to express gratitude for your unwavering dedication and exemplary service throughout your tenure at Wallingford Public Schools. Your commitment to the success and well-being of our students has been nothing but short of inspiring. Whether it's in the classroom, in meetings, or doing extracurricular activities, your, you possess for uh, your passion, excuse me, for education has left an indelible mark on the lives of all of our students. Your retirement signifies the culmination of a distinguished career filled with numerous achievements and milestones. Your expertise, professionalism, and tireless efforts have helped shape the future of our students and have contributed significantly to the overall growth and success of this district. As you embark on a new chapter, I want you to know that your contributions will always be remembered here and cherished. Your legacy will continue to inspire us all, serving as a testament to the profound impact that dedicated educators like yourself can have on this world. Accept our thanks and our sincere best wishes as you move forward in your next journey. So please enjoy your retirement, have fun, enjoy your family, do lots of wonderful things. Think of us often, uh, but we wish you nothing but the best in your next chapter. So thank you again. So I am gonna have uh, Dr. Thompson start us off with recognizing our retirees this year. Thank you, Mrs. Bullsey. What an honor to uh, recognize these incredible, dedicated educators. And to start us off, I'm going to call up the principal to say a few remarks. So when I call you up, and then I know you're going to want to introduce our honoree and have them join you. So let's start off with Stephen School and Principal Kylie, Christina Kylie. Right, and I'd like to call up Christine Farkash. Christine Farkash has spent her entire teaching career as an educator in the Wallingford Public Schools. Chris has been a teacher at E.C. Stevens School for her 35-year career. Chris taught grade two for 24 years, pre-K for one year, where she was nominated as E.C. Stevens Teacher of the Year, and for the past 10 years, Chris has been teaching kindergarten. Kindergarten is far more than teaching letter sounds and number ID. It's about creating a love for learning at the start of a young learner's school journey. Chris has a special spark sparkle that results in a love of learning for all students. Chris is nurturing while being transparent with her students as she works hard to meet them right where they are and help them grow. Chris, Chris loves what she does. You can feel her passion and excitement. You can be sure to find Chris wearing shamrock leggings or dressing up like she is 100 years old to celebrate the 100th day of school. Just this morning, Chris was singing a math-infused greeting to help her kiddos with composing numbers, and the level of engagement was simply incredible. Throughout her 35-year career, Chris has hosted numerous student teachers and has been an influential mentor to many teachers, including two teachers who are currently successful teachers at E.C. Stevens. Chris has always played an active role in the school community. Chris serves on the Teacher of the Year and Scholarship Committees and ran the K-Kids and the Caring Kids Club for many years. She also served as the PTO rep and as a WEA rep for about 10 years during her early career. Chris feels she has been one lucky educator to have had students whose children she has also had as students. What a neat, 
full circle experience. Whether you ask the 25-year-old former student or the current five-year-old student what they enjoyed most about Mrs. Farcash, they will tell you that she is their cheerleader, wanting nothing but the best for them. So while Chris feels lucky, we are the lucky ones to have had the opportunity to work alongside such an exemplary educator. Wishing you nothing but the best in your next chapter, Mrs. Farcash. Congratulations and thank you so much. Our next honoree will come from Parker Farms. And with that, Principal Mrs. Sagnella will be here to say a few words. I am honored to ask Diana Macri to please join me. myself, I wouldn't cry. <laughs> Without a doubt, countless lives, young and old, have been touched by the legacy of this amazing educator, Diana Macri. Diana's roots in Wallingford are deep. She started here as a bright and energetic first grader at Parker Farms, where she went to school with some of her current colleagues. She raised her two beautiful daughters in Wallingford, who both went through the Wallingford Public Schools, and then she ventured into the wonderful world of education as her profession here in Wallingford. Diana has devoted 30 years to the Wallingford Public Schools. For 20 years, she taught at Cook Hill in fourth, first, and second grade, and for the last 10 years, she has taught third grade at Parker Farms. Her passion for being a lifelong learner, her love for children, and her desire to always make learning real and fun has led her on this incredible journey and will be the legacy she leaves behind. This year's class, and so many before them, have been positively impacted by Diana's incredible ability to make deep connections with her students, learn what it takes to inspire them, support their individual levels, and make the learning fun. Diana is a true advocate for her students. She works tirelessly for all her students and strives every day to meet their needs. I have always been so impressed with how she provides the wide range of students, the wide range of students' abilities, challenging her students who perform at the highest levels and providing consistent support for those who need it most. Her patience and creativity has captured her students over the years here are just a few words from this year's class sharing how very much they truly love her. She is kind to us. She's not like any other teacher. She is sweet. She's very kind and funny. She's the best. I love when Mrs. Macri reads to me. I love that she's always helping me understand math. I love how Mrs. Macri is nice to me. I love how she is always trying to make learning fun. She's a fun person. She always lets us do lots of projects. When we get five stars on the tree, she lets us pick something we want to do. She lets us have some extra fun after we do a good job with our work. She is very helpful. She's funny and always makes me laugh. She helps me understand. Diana's love for being a teacher is not only because she loves children, but she truly loves to learn. Her colleagues shared how very much they will miss her incredible notes that she takes on her trusty legal pad at every meeting and professional development session they attend. I have always been so impressed with how quickly she would connect with our instructional coaches to collaborate on implementing the newest learned skills and looking at student work and data to dig in and strengthen her instruction so it was always the best for what her students needed. From sharing her knowledge and ideas with colleagues, to mentoring a teacher, mentoring a young teacher, being a part of curriculum writing for the district, a collaborative partner not only to support academic instruction, but also to implement best practices for the social emotional well-being of her students, to receiving the Teacher of the Year one year for the district, 
Diana has positively impacted so many of her colleagues. She has been a role model of patience, kindness, flexibility, willingness to take risks, and readiness to learn. So many of her colleagues shared how very much they appreciate her warm smile and morning hellos, greeting them in the morning by name. I too always love when she pops her head into my office to say good morning. As Diana begins her journey into this next wonderful chapter of her life, we are excited for her to share how she is looking forward to giving her time and energy to true carefree time with her husband, no schoolwork on the weekends and nights, spontaneous outings with her daughters, enjoying her water activities at the beach, traveling out west to wine country, volunteering more with Camp Rising Sun, or even in her five-year-old niece's classroom, and most importantly, time all to herself. Diana, thank you so much for 30 wonderful years. Congratulations, your Parker Burns family is gonna miss you. Our next presenter comes from Dag Hammersholt Middle School, Mr. Jewizik. Good evening. It's an honor to call up Mrs. Julie Boucher this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to celebrate the retirement of Mrs. Julie Boucher. Mrs. Boucher joined the DAG community in 2011, and while only having served here as principal since September, it did not take me long to realize the love and passion that she has for sharing her love of music with her students. When visiting her classroom, it is immediately evident that she cares tremendously about the well-being and success of each and every one of her students. Students often describe her as their trusted adult in the building, and her students state that she is kind, caring, supportive, and enthusiastic about her subject matter. In addition to teaching music and chorus, Mrs. Boucher has also served as the director of our drama club. One of my favorite memories this year, Mrs. Boucher, was watching the pride she took in directing our drama club's performance of Frozen Junior. During the various performances, I would often look over to see Mrs. Boucher Singing, singing and dancing along to the play in the back of the auditorium, smiling from ear to ear, which reflected the passion and pride she took in the success of her students. Last year, Mrs. Boucher was named Teacher of the Year at DAG, a very well-deserving accolade. When asking her what she is going to do with all of her time in retirement, she hopes to continue to give back and share her love for music with others by teaching piano part-time, and she's looking forward to traveling to Utah, Missouri, and Florida this summer. Mrs. Boucher, thank you for all that you have done for the students and staff at DAG during your tenure here. Your impact on students extends far beyond our building, and I feel so fortunate to have been able to collaborate with you on various projects throughout the year. Congratulations on your retirement, and enjoy this next chapter in your life. We're going to call up uh, Mr. Corso from Lyman Hall High School for our, our next honoree. All right. Uh, Ann, can you head on up? Ann Winch, everybody. So uh, thank you for having me here tonight to speak on behalf of Ann. As a business teacher at Lyman Hall High School for over 20 years, Ann has certainly left her mark both at school and with her students. Ann originally started off her career at the phone company where, and ended her career, her career hating phones in the classroom <laughs> constantly. Um, she also started uh, her family raising her three beautiful children. It was during this time she decided to use her business degree and become a business teacher and never looked back. 
is a business teacher for many years and has seen as uh, taught everything from keyboarding to shorthand, marketing, international business. At Lyman Hall, she was also entirely responsible for bringing the real world into the classroom in the form of our school store. And if you haven't been there, I'd, I'd recommend you come by and check it out. So she took what was an old classroom, turned it into a wonderful school store by applying for a grant for the, through the WEF to get the mobile cart to start, and then a larger grant and the greater vision uh, in opening our store of packets. She's guided students through many learning opportunities, such as pricing out merchandise, hosting and promoting fundraisers, organizing and running fashion shows, making and selling mittens, baking and selling cookies. The list can go on and on since her energy and ideas have been endless. Her impact extends far beyond the classroom. Not only has Ann served as the student council advisor in the past, but she's also served as the DECA advisor for over 20 years. She has served as a mentor for dozens of students as they have competed in our state DECA competition and has had countless state winners uh, just in my nine years with her, uh, which they call DECA glass. She has then traveled with them all over the country to compete at the national level. She's been doing this for so long that she has endless stories and stories piling up of throwing students in her minivan back when that was appropriate, <laughs> uh, which is not now, uh, but we, we could get away with a lot more in, in the previous years. Um, her journey at Lyman Hall marked by dedication, passion, and unwavering commitment has left an indelible mark on our school, our school community, and the countless students whose lives she has touched. Throughout her time here, she has brought ideas, energy, enthusiasm, in all that she's done, and she will be missed. Uh, Anne, you know, is one of those teachers uh, that when it comes to retirement, principals get really nervous about having to fill her shoes. Um, you can't, it's hard to find people that are willing to put in the time and commit uh, the time that it takes to run the school store, be it all those additional after-school events. Uh, it's really difficult. So uh, she is one of the ones uh, that I, I'm not sure we'll be able to replace, but we will work hard uh, and try and do so and you will be missed. Next, we'd like to call up Mr. Zacco from Sheehan High School. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Lisa Miller is not with us today, but I'm going to say some remarks on her behalf. Lisa Miller has worked at Sheehan High School as a dedicated English teacher for the past 21 years. Um, <clears throat> she uh, finished her student teaching as her cooperating teacher was retiring, so it was a perfect slide in for her, and she did a great job as a student teacher, and she started uh, at Sheehan back in 2003. Um, <clears throat> Lisa is also a graduate of Sheehan High School, class of 1986, and she, uh, she was a stand-up athlete, particularly in basketball. Uh, she is uh, one of the elite people on a very sh a banner with a very short list of basketball players, boys and girls players that scored 1,000-plus points in their four-year career. Uh, DeJoya is the name, not Miller. So look for that banner if you're ever at Sheehan. Um, <clears throat> she's also served as a cooperating teacher herself, helping lots of teachers throughout the years become great English teachers. She is a leader within the English department and within the school. She has a, a great knack for having the vibe and her finger on the pulse of the school. And I learned quickly to go to her to get some advice when I needed to know how teachers were feeling in a, in a particular, whatever it was, particularly early in, the, in that first year. So I, I want to thank Lisa for her wisdom. She provides that wisdom for not only administration, but for her department and other teachers as well. And she does it very quietly. Um, <clears throat> Most importantly, she's an accomplished teacher. It's, it's what the students uh, feel about her and express about her that make her such a great teacher. She just, she can motivate any student, regardless of how much or how little motivation they may have. She just does a great job at connecting with kids and showing them that she truly cares about them. So we wish her the best in retirement. She may explore other fields eventually, but in her immediate future, She's going to attend to her garden and take care of her uh, lots of dogs. She has multiple dogs, and she has a son that's still coming through the Wallingford Public School System herself. So congratulations to Lisa.
Next, we'd like to call up uh, Mr. Dirksen from Pond Hill. Miss Amy Jagoda could join me up here, please. I'd like to formally take this time to deny her request for retirement. Oh. Does, does that work? No, this is unfortunate. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you. It is my honor uh, and pleasure to be here tonight to speak on behalf of the remarkable career of Amy Jagoda, a speech and language pathologist and audiologist from Pond Hill Elementary School. I definitely would count myself very lucky to have spent these past two years with Amy. And also, I can attest and I can imagine how much of an impact she has had on the colleagues, students, and families that she has interacted with during her outstanding career in the Wallingford Public Schools District. During her almost 20 years in the district, Amy has defined herself as the model professional that others in her field try to emulate. Her ability to service the needs of students with fidelity and confidence provides a professional support and guidance to her colleagues and be a trusted resource for families in the district are all irreplaceable qualities, which is why I want to deny the request that come so naturally to Amy and will be forever missed at Pond Hill. I have learned in these past two years that much of what I have missed while not working with Amy is the complete depth and breadth of her ability to make others around her feel heard, respected, appreciated, all while bringing a smile and laughter to any and all situations. Amy may be a speech and language pathologist and audiologist in her degree and resumes and certifications, but I would argue that her official title is Muse. Amy can inspire a smile and a great atmosphere anywhere she goes. Her laugh will immediately initiate the laughter of others, and her warmth creates a sense of belonging for all in her presence. To be fair, you also never knew what was going to happen when Amy walked into a room. Whether it was a Christmas present surprise that left us all a little bit itchy, or a pop-up scavenger hunt that spread both mayhem and fun throughout the building, or promoting the mental and physical health of young girls at Pond Hill, Amy was unpredictable with her actions, but always predictable with her purpose, to better those around her. When I asked those who work closely with Amy every day to share some of their favorite memories or the words that come to mind when they think of her, they shared selfless, dependable, sincere, loyal, kind, energetic. And the comments from newer members of the Pond Hill family highlight how it was Amy who made them feel that they belonged in the building. It was Amy who checked in when she noticed that people were struggling and provided the necessary encouragement and support. It was Amy whose door was always open to listen and work through problems. And it is Amy who sets the model example for how to spread gladness and elation and make all feel included. Without Amy at Pond Hill, we will miss her smile, her guest's appearance on Lion News Live. I know that we're gonna have a, a, an anchor need. Uh, someone has to be the partner. Um, we will miss her support and guidance. We will miss her listening ear her unconditional fr friendship, and her innate ability to bring the Pond Hill community together. Amy is irreplaceable. They also shared some other stories that I can't necessarily share here, but they are hilarious and are amazing and speak to who the, the person that Amy is. Pond Hill and the Wallingford Public Schools community wishes you the best of luck as you spend your time now as a social event planner or raising chicks or as a pickleball Olympian or as a remote on-location reporter for Line News Live. That's definitely in your future. We will miss our muse, our inspiration, our contagious smile, but we will continue to be a strong Pond Hill family because you have shown us all the way. Congratulations on your retirement, Amy, and thank you for the imprints that you have left throughout this community as they will inspire all you have impacted to continue our journey. Thank you. It's my pleasure to call up our next honoree, Kathy Milan.
It is truly my pleasure, Kathy, to celebrate your remarkable career. Someone who's been the heartbeat of the Wallingford Public Schools since 2004. As Kathy embarks on the journey of retirement beginning in August, it's with a mix of joy for her and a tinge of sadness for us, knowing that her presence will be deeply missed within these school community walls. In the realm of healthcare, there are individuals who not only excel in their roles, but also embody the spirit of compassion, dedication, and excellence. Kathy is one such individual. Since 2004, she has been the guiding light, the steady hand, the compassionate soul that has touched countless lives in the Wallingford Public Schools. Over the past few years, our world has been rocked by COVID-19, presenting us with unprecedented challenges and uncertainties. In the face of this adversity, Kathy rose to the occasion with courage, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to the health and well-being of our students, staff, and community. As the nurse manager of our school district, Kathy not only provided essential medical care, but also served as a pillar of strength and reassurance for all of us. She led with compassion, empathy, and wisdom, guiding us through the darkest days of the pandemic with grace and determination. Throughout her years of service to our district, Kathy has demonstrated exceptional leadership, implementing rigorous safety protocols, coordinating testing and vaccination efforts, and ensuring that our schools remain safe and supportive environments for learning. Her dedication to the health and safety of our school community has been nothing short of inspiring. But perhaps what truly sets Kathy apart is her unwavering kindness and compassion. In the face of fear and uncertainty, she remained a constant source of comfort and support, offering a listening ear, a reassuring smile, and a compassionate touch to all who needed it. Her genuine care and concern for others have left an indelible mark on our hearts and minds, and her legacy of kindness will continue to inspire us for years to come. On behalf of all of us, Kathy, I extend our heartfelt thanks and best wishes, best wishes for a happy and fulfilling retirement. May the next chapter be filled with joy, laughter, and all the blessings you so richly deserve. And at this time, I'd like to call up Mrs. Carlson for our Rock Hill retiree and honoree. <laughs> I'd like to invite Mrs. Lori Hines to come on down. This is the awkward part where you just, you just stand. <laughs> I'd like to wish a congratulations to all of the retirees being celebrated this evening. It is an amazing accomplishment for each of you. Today is a day of celebration as we gather to bid farewell to someone who has been an integral part of our school community. It is with many emotions that we say goodbye to Mrs. Lori Hines, our beloved reading interventionist, as she embarks on the next phase of her life and the journey of retirement. For 26 years, Lori has been a pillar of strength, compassion, and dedication here at Rock Hill School. Her passion for teaching, her commitment to student success, and her collegial relationships have left a special mark on our community. Mrs. Hines' journey with Wallingford Public Schools began in 1997 as a paraeducator, where she displayed a flair for fostering learning. In 1998, she assumed a role as a reading interventionist, a position she has held for over two and a half decades. Lori served as a reading interventionist at Moses Y Beach, where she had an impact on countless students, laying the foundation for their literacy skills and setting them on a path to success. 2010, as the elementary schools split into levels, Mrs. Hines transitioned seamlessly to Rock Hill School, where she continued her valuable work. Mrs. Hines' dedication has extended beyond her role. She has become a beacon of kindness, always ready to lend a helping hand wherever needed. Whether it was serving on the Sunshine Committee, 
the math committee, or the literacy committee, Mrs. Hines always eagerly has been involved and partnered with her colleagues and friends to host staff and, oh, I'm sorry, to host staff and family events and give back to the Rock Hill community at large. Lori's presence at social gatherings and special functions have added warmth and camaraderie to our school community. Mrs. Hines' willingness to go above and beyond for her coworkers has been evident throughout her career, from taking on a colleague's bus duty to seamlessly stepping up in as a substitute in a classroom or manning the sign-in out table for parent events. She exemplifies the true spirit of teamwork and collaboration. Mrs. Hines, as you embark on this new chapter of your life, surrounded by your loving family, your husband, Tim, your three children, Tim, Aaron, and Claire, and your grandchild, Grant, know that your legacy here at Rock Hill School will live on in the countless lives you have touched and memories you have shared with colleagues who are friends, students, and families. On behalf of the entire school community, we extend our heartfelt gratitude for your years of service, and we wish you all of the happiness and fulfillment in your well-deserved retirement. May this next chapter of your life be filled with joy, laughter, and new adventures. Congratulations on your retirement, Mrs. Hines. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for all of our retirees? Thank you so much for those beautiful words. Thank you to the people who curated the words to really try to depict the impact, although probably a tough task, of the impact that these retirees have really brought to their school communities. Thank you all for your service to Wallingford. It is truly a testament to your dedication, your passion, what you do every single day. There's really, thank you feels so small. So I hope that you uh, feel our sincere thank you for everything that you've done. And as I was walking up here, I know Mr. Vado stopped me, so he wants to uh, put his sentiments in. I can't resist saying something. Kathy, first, I want to thank you for <laughs> stepping up during those times when it was really tough. Um, I certainly appreciate that. I know a couple of superintendents did as well. It's just amazing, folks. Weekends, you name it, always. Um, as a veteran teacher, I just wanted to express my thanks to all of you. Never forget, this was the best occupation career anybody could have because you develop relationships with kids that last forever. Just today, <clears throat> I'm a Facebook person, and I only did it to con connect with former students. One of my students told me, he, you know how they give the birthdays? He was 62 years old. and. I said to him, you can't be 62, um, but he was. Um, I must have been 10 when I started teaching. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I, just, I just felt the need to say thank you all for your commitment to education. And remember, what you've done for children will never be forgotten by them or their parents. And you will always remember yourself, all the things that you've done. It will come back to you. And you'll meet them in doctor's offices. You'll meet them in the grocery store. And you always got to try to look your best, especially when you're in a doctor's office and they tell you, oh, Mr. Vado, could you go in there and get changed? No, uh, get somebody else. But anyhow, um, I, I just wanted to say thank you all um, as a fellow colleague. And I, I know what, what your life is like. I know what you've been doing with our children, and I appreciate it. Thank you. So thank you so very much. We wish you so much health, happiness, and so many amazing memories as you start this next chapter of your life. So thanks so much. Okay, moving on to our next um, agenda item. It is public comment. And I know our board meetings are quite riveting, but if you would like to go and celebrate, by all means. Oh, you know what? I have one more. Sorry. 
Superintendent Blizzy, I'm sorry, can you sit down? I was so excited by the, oh, by all means, we're going to say. I'm going to bring it to you, Mrs. Blizzy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roscoe. Um, so this month is um, Board Member Appreciation Month. And so I wanted to recognize each one of you and say thank you for all of your dedication and hard work to all of our students, our families, our staff within the school system. Um, from the policy to budget um, to special ed, um, executive session meetings, uh, you're always willing to help and set up time to meet with us uh, and to go continue supporting all of us as we move through the journey of supporting our students. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. So as we've done in the past, I want to recognize each one of you. So next to each one of you, you have um, a red bag. And I'll tell you what's inside the bag so you don't have to all open them right now. But inside the bag is a thank you mug to say thank you. And then underneath the bag is a book that is dedicated to a library in your honor. And so I'm going to just quickly go through each book so you can kind of hold it up as I uh, address each one of you. No particular order, just wanted to uh, just give the title and I'll just give a one or two sentences about each book. Um, so Mrs. Passaretti, I'll start with you. Uh, this book will be in the Moses Y. Beach uh, Library and it's How to Count to One and Don't Even Think About Bigger Numbers. Uh, and it's a fun and interactive read aloud experience about counting. Dr. Roscoe, your book will be in the Highland Library, and it's all the way to the top, How One Girl's Fight for Americans with Disabilities Changed Everything. And this is a true story uh, about a lifelong activist who um, participated in the Capitol Crawl, and the, whole, and the book goes through her journey uh, while educating and sharing uh, her story about her own life the process. So that will be at Highland Library. Mrs. Rainis, your book will be at Parker Farms Elementary School and yours is called Ferris. Uh, and this is a hilarious book about um, a real love story about a girl, a grandmother, a ghost, and growing up. And so uh, I think the students there will really enjoy this book. Uh, Mr. Votto, your book is going to be at Cook Hill, and it's called I Want to Be Spaghetti. <laughs> when I saw the title, I said, oh, it has to go. So the librarians help us out, and, and they select books for us, and then I choose who gets what book. But this one's about, it's a very funny book uh, about um, ramen noodle packet that wants to be spaghetti. So... <laughs> It doesn't compare. I'm sure it does not. Um, but that will be at um, Cook Hill. And then um, Mr. Deering for Cook Hill Preschool. So, uh, so cool, sharks. So this is a um, book all about sharks. And so I thought it would be a real fun book. And it talks about um, how they go through their cycle of surviving. And so that will be at the preschool for preschool. Uh, Dr. Reed, your book will be at Pond Hill, and it's called Counting Kindness, 10 Ways to Help Welcome Refugee Children. So it's really a compassionate book. It's about counting, and it captures the power of welcoming a community um, and how we can teach our children about welcoming others into our schools, into our communities. Mrs. Regan, your book is going to be at Rock Hill, and it's a rover's story. And so this is, the rover's name is Resilience, and it's a Mars rover determined to live up to his name. And so there's lots of wonderful things that he does, but he lacks uh, human-like feelings. And so the book is all about him trying to work through all of that. So very interesting. Um, hey, Mr. Ross, your book is going to be at Mary G. Fritz Elementary School, and it's Celebrate With Me, Recipes, Crafts, and Holiday Fun from Around the World. So um, it's a great picture book, and it has all different recipes and crafts from around the world. So it get, really gives students an idea um, on how to not just create different uh, meals, but also crafts that go with it, educational as well. Welcome. 
and Mrs. Rosacci, yours uh, will be at E.C. Stevens Elementary School, and it's called The Dot. So this book is um, about, even though art class is over, it is about a student trying to um, kind of find a way to express herself, um, and she's struggling with that, and so she starts off with a dot on a paper, and it kind of goes from there, so... Thank you, uh, everyone, for everything that you do for us to support our students here and to support all of us and our staff. So just a little something. Thank you. Thank you so much, Superintendent Belizzi. I know we always look forward to um, being able to see what these books are and hear a little bit about them. And I know personally it'll be really special that my boys will be able to read this at Highland. So thank you for that. And now you may be dismissed to go celebrate. Thank you so much. And congratulations again to our retirees. <clears throat>now moving along in our agenda, we are moving to item number six, public comment. I'm just going to give it a second. It doesn't seem that we have anyone for public comment. Okay. <laughs> we are going to now move to item number seven. This is our consent agenda. So does anyone have anything that needs to come off of the consent agenda? Okay. So I would like to make a motion then to approve consent agenda, a consent agenda item 7.1 through 7.17. May I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you. We do not have any items that have been removed from the consent agenda. And now I will pass it over to you, Mrs. Passaretti. Thank you, Mrs. Roscoe. I have here to report um, an in-kind donation from the Library Wine Bar and Bistro for the use of their lower level banquet area and back parking lot for a Mediterranean themed pop-up bistro and pop-up food truck. That was a mouthful. Um, so we would like to thank uh, the Library Wine and, and Library Wine Bar and Bistro um, for the use of their facilities. Um, this is a wonderful program that we have, and um, we really appreciate um, John Masella, who is the owner of the library, for partnering with us and allowing us to use um, his facility. And not only that, but it sounds like his his parking lot so that um, this event could go on. So we, and this is the, the Lyman Hall Culinary Program, which is a phenomenal, <clears throat> phenomenal program that Lyman Hall has. So we thank John Masella and the library for this gift. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Passaretti. Now we are going to move into our committee reports. Mr. Ross, would you like to give an update on ACES, please? Certainly, a lot has happened in the last month at ACES. Uh, we have had a couple of new members come in. Uh, we have also <laughs> enrollment and a lot of results are done and the people are being notified. Uh, we have a new board member. And physical matters, uh, we received the $12 million reimbursement on the Wintergreen purchase. The reimbursement for Chase has been, has been posted and we expect to hear that from shortly. We've had a problem with check washing attempts. Uh, we've had several checks go out to vendors that never got there and they ended up in California cashed. But of course, it, it, no loss to us, but we're investigating that. And the, the ACES Foundation Gala was just held recently. I did not get the opportunity to attend, but I understand it was very well attended. Basically, that's it. Thank you so much, Mr. Ross. And now an update uh, for system-wide PTAC, Mrs. Latour. 
not a meeting this month. Thank you. Quick update. And I, I know Mrs. Turner is, um, is ill, so. Um, she did want me to just share and highlight one thing that um, on April, let me just make sure I get this right, on April 16th, between 5 and 7 p.m. at Mark T. Sheehan High School will be the Special Education Resource Fair. Uh, so we have 27 vendors that are going to be participating, uh, and all are welcome to that event, so we're looking forward. So again, it's April 16th from 5 to 7 at Mark T. Sheehan High School. Thank you. And Mr. Bondi, would you like to give an update on food service? Okay, so there was no meeting. And Dr. Thompson, a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. So uh, we'll be meeting on third, the racial justice team for the town's meeting on third. Thank you. Mr. Deering, the CABE report. CABE recently held its day on the Hill. It was a phenomenal event. We had board members and superintendents from across the state, as well as a handful of students from across the state. We came out to the Bushnell and Hartford first for a legislative update about bills that are relevant to public education. We got to hear from several members of the Education Committee of the Connecticut General Assembly. We then went over to the Capitol where we had an opportunity to have dialogue with our state-level elected officials. Ms. Reynas and I had to have some very good conversations with Representatives Fishbein and Mashinsky. I don't know, Ms. Reynas, if you have anything that you want to add. No, thank you. You covered it all. Thank you, Ms. Reynas, for joining me at that event. Thank you. Thank you. I know CABE has been very busy also reporting about the governor's budget and what's going to happen with that. And so I, I also just want to extend my thanks for um, Mrs. Reynas and Mr. Deering for attending CABE's Day on the Hill. So appreciate that. We do not have any old business. So we are going to move to item number 12. I would like to make a motion to go into executive session. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We are now in executive session. Thank you. We are back from executive session. We are now going to move to agenda item number 13. I would like to pass this over to Mr. Vado and Dr. Reed for our instructional committee reports. Dr. Thompson, are you going to handle this part of it? Yes, Mr. Vado. Okay. I'd be happy to. And the floor is all yours. Okay, thank you. So um, I asked the board's consideration um, to approve, review, having had a chance to look it over and approve the um, Wallingford Public Schools Increasing Educator Diversity Plan. This is in response to a uh, state um, mandate, um, Public Act. 23-167 section 10, it says each local board um, of education shall submit an increasing educator diversity plan to the Connecticut State Department of Education for their review and approval. Um, they provided a template for us, which, which you have in your packet, um, and the, pl the plan would commence uh, July 1st, 2024, um, and then each school year after that. Basically, there's three components to this plan. Um, recruitment, the second component is hiring and selection, and the third component is retention. So each district is asked to submit a, um, a template that uh, lists the goals in those areas, manages the goals, what the strategies are, and what the indicators of progress. How do we know that how we're, we're doing towards those goals? Um, resources required, what would be the risks and mitigation, and what would be the communication and engagement component. So while you have our, our proposal um, for you, um, I would just want to thank the, the folks who helped put this together. Um, this is in a response to, um, obviously, the needs of the state, um, and um, it will be reviewed by the, the Department of Education and they will provide feedback to us. And if, if revisions are needed, then the committee would go back and work, and then we'd bring it back to you for, for your consideration on those revisions. Um, 
And while it's not a yearly plan to submit for the state, it is something that we should be reviewing and determining how we're doing. And so um, that's that's what I'm I'm uh, I'm hopeful that you will will approve that to go forward to the state. And if so, I will send that in tomorrow uh, for their review. Yes, please. Why don't we, um, okay, so at this time, we're going to vote to accept this, uh, pr this uh, draft plan uh, for this diversity education thing. Um, let's see. All right, why don't we just say all those in favor of accepting this, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank We're you. all set. Thank you. Operations. Right. Thank you very much. Now we will go to our operations committee report. Mrs. Regan and Mrs. Reynas. Good evening. Uh, so the operations committee met on Tuesday, March 12th. Um, it was, uh, we had a, a presentation from the Energia. Um, we did have, we talked about a few different things that I would have to say they were pretty, we, looking back at my notes, it was a um, uh, pretty typical uh, operations meeting. Uh, the bulk of the evening was taken up by the presentation by Energia, um, which we are going to be discussing um, further on down there, um, down this agenda. So uh, that was, that's the report, is it? wasn't a very exciting meeting. <laughs> um, moving on to item 14.2. This is the 2425 Healthy Food Certification, or HFC statement. Uh, and I have a motion that I have to read into it. Now I went and moved it around, sorry. Oh, you're the best. I moved my paper over here. All right. Uh, this is the approval to implement, implement the 2425 Healthy Food Certification Statement, the Healthy Food Option and Exemptions for Food and Beverage Items. Um, I make a motion to approve the Healthy Food Option as stated below. Healthy Food Option, pursuant to CGS Section 10-215F, the, the Wallingford Board of Education certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. This certification shall, in shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including, but not limited to, school stores, vending machines, schools, cafeterias, culinary programs, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or by non-school organizations and groups. Do I have a second on this motion? Second. I, I'd like to have a discussion. Um, I was actually hoping that we can have the motion to approve the exemption because this will really affect um, any of the um, it, sports teams that are selling things at basketball games, football games, any of those, if you don't have an exemption um, for school events, then the booster clubs will not be able to sell candy, pizza, anything that doesn't fall under. Yeah, we make a motion to do both. You're going to do it both things? Both things. Oh, we do yeah, both. We have to we, choose. No. Okay. No, we don't have okay. to choose. I'm going to do, so the, the motion is only for this first one. Okay, great. And then I'll... Go ahead and do the motion for the okay, second great. one. Is there any other discussion on this first motion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any uh, against? Any abstentions? The motion carries. The second motion. I make a motion to approve exemption, exemption for food and beverage items as stated below. 
exemptions for food and beverage items. The Wallingford Board of Education will allow the sale of students, the sale to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut nutritional nutrition standards and beverages not listed in section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes, provided that the following conditions are met. One, the sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. Two, the sale is at the location of the event. And three, the food and beverage items are not sold from a vending machine or a school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. For example, soccer games, soccer school plays, and interscholastic debates are events but soccer, soccer practices, play rehearsals, and debate team meetings are not. The regular school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the food and beverage sales. Can I get a second on this motion? Second. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. Thank you so much. Superintendent Belizzi, can you give us your administrative report, please? No, we are not quite done with oh, the operations. Committee. I'm really just struggling today. I'm really trying to rush. <laughs> can, can we tell? All right. Sorry. Go ahead. You can go back. <laughs> you can hear my voice is tired. It's ready for bed. <laughs> and the next item on our agenda is the discussion and the possible approval of the Guaranteed Energy Performance Contract, which was given to us in a presentation. This is the presentation that was given to us uh, at the um, operations meeting on March 12th. Is there anything that you would like to add to this, Mr. Barone? Yes. Um, if I can get this mic to... Okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess just a couple comments, uh, you know. I asked this, this company to come in to do the presentation to explain more about what this whole process is about. The intent is to see if it's going to be uh, beneficial for us to move forward with one of the, you know, with a project like this. And, you know, if we, if we can move forward, what it would do for us. Um, they, you know, they proposed a, a seven-step process. The first step we did, which was the discovery. What I'd like to do is move to the second step, which is they're, they're calling the financial assessment. And um, this is basically providing them a couple of years of history on our costs related to our uh, utilities. And then based on that, they'll, they'll come up with some ideas on whether or not, you know, it makes sense to even look forward going forward. You know, none of the steps I'm proposing are costing us any hard dollars out of pocket. You know, we might have to spend some time putting some spreadsheets together for them. But I, th I think it's well worth it to, you know, to, I guess, keep exploring this option. Um, and for anyone who wasn't on the operation, who would, did not see the operations committee, this is um, a company that is going to come in and do an audit for us to help potentially fund some projects out of energy savings. Is that correct? Some energy projects that we may be able to fund out of energy, the projected energy savings. Sure. sure. The, the whole theory is that, you know, the savings you gain by the upgrades we do would fund, uh, you know, whatever upgrades we end up doing. Um, and, and you know, they're, they've done, I don't know, they, I think they said 130 mm -hmm. throughout New England. Um, so they've got a track record. We did talk to a couple other communities. And there's no cost to us to do this audit. The first, so we, the first step was the presentation. The second step, I assume, or the next step that we're on is just to have them and come and do the audit. And that is at no cost to us. Correct. But, but, for this, you know, there should be no cost all the way through. I mean, but, this is true, you, know, but... Easy, you know, each phase we would discuss it if we, you know, continue forward. All right. Is there any other discussion on this before we go ahead and take a vote? So our vote is to go ahead and move ahead with the audit, correct? Correct. Okay. So they're calling it an assessment. But an assessment, yeah, yeah. the assessment. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to go ahead and give Mr. Barone or central office the authority to move ahead with the assessment um, from Energia. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? 
The motion carries. Thank you. Now. Now. Now, Superintendent Belizzi, I'll pass it over to you for the administrative report. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Um, so just a couple of things I wanted to highlight, um, just in terms of the budget update. So on March 6th, um, Dr. Dr. Roscoe and I and um, Mr. Barone presented the budget to the mayor. Um, so it was a good conversation. We had gone over what our sustained request is, our strategic, and then our capital items request. And so we should hear back uh, on April 1st as to what our recommended, what the mayor's recommended budget um, will be. So we can work from there. So one more week and we should have some answers for that. Uh, I did want to highlight um, last Monday evening was our invention convention. And so thank you to all of you that were able to be judges for us. But I do want to highlight and thank, um, and she is not here tonight, but our Assistant Superintendent for Special Ed, Mrs. Amy Turner, uh, along with her staff and our 3-5 uh, building administrators and our two step teachers at the middle school, um, Mr. Bakakis and Mr. Andresen, for all of their help in making the uh, invention convention such a success. I think it was a really great evening. We got to see a lot of creative and inventive things and ideas. The students were great. I think the families really enjoyed it. Um, so a special thank you to all of them for stepping up while Mrs. Valentine is out. Um, and then also just to give an update to that, we have um, secured a certified teacher who will be the long-term sub. She started last week for Mrs. Valentine. And so uh, she will go through and follow her step schedule, making sure that she meets with all the students at all of our three, five schools. Um, so she will be with us through the end of this school year. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight that as well. I know our building administrators did send out notifications uh, to let all the parents know at their building level, but I just wanted to let all of you know as well. Danielle, also, um Two, the two students were honored today at the state legislature. Oh, very exciting. Um, so they were yes. brought, uh, I think, by Representative Craig Fishbein to be honored at the state legislature on the Senate floor. So it was really nice. And very exciting. Very nice. Thank you. Um, good stuff. I mean, it was so, such a great evening with lots of good um, inventions. So I'm very proud of our students. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we did talk a little bit about the special education fair. So just a reminder, that's Tuesday, April 16th. Um, Mrs. Turner did want me to also share about the preschool lottery. Um, so we have 88 slots for the four-year-olds. She did notify all of the families um, for full day. We have 33 slots for the three-year-olds um, for half day. And so parents have until April 1st to accept or decline their slots. Um, and so once we know all of that, then we'll let people know, you know, if there's a waiting list from there or not. So any other questions for me at this time? This is Belize. I have a couple of things I just wanted to, uh, I, I don't know how else to get this minutes or how to approach such a thing, but I'm going to go through you. Sure. If you think the chair should be involved, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. Um, first of all, the, the we have mentioned this a while ago. This is a minor thing. Um, we still have Varsity Scholar at the end of the year where kids from both high schools get honored. We need to change that name. Remember we talked about it because the word Varsity implies ath athletics, athletics, which it does not. Correct. So I just thought maybe we look at that and for next year, maybe have a different name, like maybe mm -hmm. Scholar Leader or something like that. Because uh, the word varsity does confuse people. It does confuse people. And I can definitely have a conversation um, with both administrators as to the reasoning behind that. Uh, I'm sure there's a history as no. to why that came up. Um, but I will definitely talk to both um, sides of town and have discussion with them about that. Um, another thing, I didn't know if I should approach you uh, during this report or the chair, and I'll have you two decide. Um, today, there was an article in the newspaper uh, where our town council chair was uh, quoted a couple of times about the two high schools versus one. And the first one was that this whole issue was dead in the water. That was the first quote. I saw that. And the second quote was that this board has been disingenuous in giving them the uh, opportunity or giving them the, 
neighborhoods. It is their turn now, the town council, to decide to approve one or two high schools or start appropriating money once we ask for them. Um, he seems to have made his decision that we didn't do this in a proper way, plopping it on their lap to do this. I think the word disingenuous is an insulting word to use toward this Board of Education for all the time and effort that we put into it. And I want, I want somebody to let him know that. I don't know if it should be you, if it should be the chair of the board, because it, it's unnecessary. Um, we put too much time and effort into this. And you know the other thing that it does? It helps divide this town by a, by a, by a, a leader of our town making such a comment. You know, people in this town love to say, oh, the rivalry is good between both sides. Baloney, folks. I have seen firsthand, and especially athletics, where that rivalry is not good. And the things that are said back and forth between these kids, whether it's in, whether they're making a joke of something or they are, and then some of them are very serious, it's, it's not fun. It's not a good thing. And comments like this don't help that situation. And I'm very, very upset because it, it's very disheartening because it, it makes like all the work that this board has done over the last how many years is worth nothing. It's just dead in the water, so that's where we're going to leave it. And the other thing I'd like to know, this Madam Chairperson or whoever, was this just his opinion or was he talking for the whole town council? I didn't get that from the article. So, Mr. Votto, I can um, just... Not I'm a little, to that. Mm. I'm not, I understand. Um, emotions run high, I think, regarding this topic, regardless. But I, I will tell you, for your request, I will certainly have the conversation with Chairman Marone and let him know. Um, and if any other board members, you know, want to talk to me privately or publicly, and if you would like your sentiments to be expressed as well, I'm very happy to do that. In terms of whether he was speaking on behalf of himself or the entire council, that would be a question for him. I think depending how you read the article, you can read it both ways. And so that's certainly a question that I can um, ask and then get the answer as well and give it back to you. And I think the other important thing to, to keep in mind is that, yes, some people want to renovate new schools. <laughs> but, and I don't want to make this a financial thing basically for academics, and I think it's a great idea for that for one school. However, to renovate to new Sheehan High School would, ex would cost the taxpayers of this town, I believe, an extra $20 million because the reimbursement would be much less because of the fact the formula that the state uses for the, the amount of square feet equaling to the number of students, there's too, many, there's too much square feet at Sheehan for the number of students that are there so the reimbursement is lower down to like 35%. That's a fact that I don't think he knows, and he needs to be told that. And he also made the comment that the school is going to be built on the Lyman Hall property. I don't know how many times I have to tell the people that is not what we voted on. We did not vote where to put the school. It was just a feasibility study because at that time we could not find any central location for a school. I need... I think he needs to understand that. You know, you don't come out and make comments without knowing the facts. I try to be nice, but I guess that wasn't nice. But anyway, the other thing I wanted to oh. talk to you about, Mrs. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. Go. No, go ahead. I'm on a roll. I know. It's okay. I understand. Um, I, I do want to let you know that I did have the opportunity to speak again today to the, re the reporter that put this out. And, and I did mention that a lot of the facts that were given were not necessarily, um, in my opinion, portrayed on behalf of maybe the board. And so I'm hoping that there's a little a better collaboration there going forward so that we can see an equal representation, you know, from, from everyone's opinions. Because people are going to agree, disagree and people are going to have their own opinions about things. But if we can just um, make sure that all parties are represented equally, I think that's all that people can, can really hope for when they're reading news media to be able to get the facts. My last thing to bother you with Superintendent Belizzi is we, uh, back in January, upped the uh, sub pay so that we could help solve a sub substitute problem in this town. We also had an MOU made with the paraeducators so that the non-IEP paraeducators could help sub so they would get a sub pay 
in addition to their regular pay. We did both those things. We listened to our teachers. We listened to parents. Um, we listened to administrators. You listened to the board, and we got this done. So what I like to know is how much have things improved or have they not improved at all, or maybe just a little? And the other information I would like to know is if you, if you can just pick a week from then sometime and give us uh, some uh, numbers as far as absences among our teachers. I think we need to know that. Sure. Sorry to put you on the spot. That's OK. Um, so you are correct that we did in January. Uh, the board did approve to increase the daily sub pay from $100 a day to $120 a day. Um, we saw that the um, college students that were available in January benefit from that. They benefited again when, they, um, when we had more college kids come back in March. Uh, it's hard to say an exact number of additional substitutes because the other piece that we get is that they don't want to, some of our substitutes don't want to sub every single day. And so it may be that they're just selecting certain days, they're selecting certain schools, and those are the only ones that they'll sub at. So we didn't see a real significant change or draw to retain or attract a lot of new substitute teachers uh, in that regard. We did begin the paraeducator MOU so that they can um, be substitutes in our classrooms when our teachers are out. Um, we currently have around um, 203 paraeducators in total. Uh, 41 of them are our instructional paraeducators, which are located in our pre-K to two buildings. So we have one paraeducator in every kindergarten classroom and one in every first grade classroom. It is um, the paraeducators part of that MOU is they have to also agree to be willing to do, uh, act as a substitute if the teacher is out. And so we did have uh, discussions with our administrators regarding when to use the instructional paraeducators and the special education paraeducators because our students come first in terms of IEPs and meeting those. Um, so we did see, once we started that, an increase in terms of coverage using our paraeducators. And so when we began this um, in January, around January 16th to current, I would say we've used uh, our paraeducators about 318 times, um, either part-time or full-time. So part of that paraeducator agreement is that if the sub pay is $120 a day, if it's a full day of coverage that they're doing, they get paid additional for that uh, at that rate, or if it's a half day, they get paid then half of that rate. So we have seen um, in school-based, I can collect data to give that to you as to how many times we did ask our clerical staff to keep track of that at every building for the month, how many times they're using a paraeducator. And I just interrupt for a minute. So that Absolutely. to me means that Many of those classrooms that had a paraeducator for a good purpose mm -hmm. now being pulled out to sub. Correct. And that's now we thought we did a good thing by including paraprofessional paraprofessionals in a classroom in kindergarten and first grade. So now we have to meet the, the, the needs and the wants of the people in the system. We are now taking away those paraeducators many times from that classroom where they could be used help children. I just want to make that point. Go ahead. Correct. Sorry, it's pulling it, that's okay. It's pulling it off of their, their primary job or their primary focus um, for why they were hired. Right. Um, and a lot of times it is that they are in the classroom that they've been working in as well okay. when, when they can. Uh, in terms of your question about um, weekly absences. So if I take a look at one week at a glance and I just look at a Monday through Friday, um, and I look at just our certified absences for the moment, we'll, we range around uh, for the week of March 11th to the 15th, certified absences only, 424 absences for the week. Um, and then filled, we have 182 of those absences were filled for the week. 67 were unfilled, and then 175 were no sub required meaning the, the role that that person has, there was not a sub that was required. 
uh, if I look at the last week, we were at just certified absences 401. Uh, no sub required was 103. Filled was 195. And unfilled was 103. 103 were unfilled. Yes. And so then that's through our system that collects all the data. Then it could have been that then the pair educators were asked, which wouldn't go through the system that I can pull it from. Um, it could be then that other certified staff members were asked to cover. Uh, so then there are other things that are happening behind the scenes that it may not be reflected here. Uh, but the way the system captures it, that's where we are. Um, are there any particular days of the week when there are more absences than others? So if I look at like our trend data, typically, um, it's typically Mondays and Fridays are days where we see higher absences, uh, both certified and non-certified staff. Um, that would be some trend data that we can continue to look at, but that's where we see typically our trends. Thank you so much, and thank you for keeping track of all that information. You're welcome. Thank you to Mrs. Bukowski in the personnel office. I won't bother you anymore. No, that's okay. <laughs> Mrs. Rasashti. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, I have, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to bring it up, but um, I know we, there there was a huge, huge amount of rain again. Um, Correct. And we had some flooding on the Sheehan turf. Um, it did drain on Sunday, and so they were able to hold lacrosse practices, but um, I think there needs to be an increase in the raking. Um, there, it, the turf is extremely slippery. The athletes are falling. Um, because the uh, pebbles, uh, the, the pieces of, of turf are piling up, and it's really slippery for the kids. Um, and so they're slipping all over the field. And we have such a large amount of usage because you have girls lacrosse, boys lacrosse, track is using the turf, and you also have the town Triton's lacrosse team. So it's getting a massive amount of usage, um, and I think that the raking needs to be increased for the safety of the kids. That is something I can actually, um, I don't know if Mr. Deptuli, you want to speak to that, but that is something we can definitely discuss. <laughs> uh, it's suggested by the manufacturer that it's only groomed once a month. That's so primarily due to the fact that the more you groom it, the quicker you wear it out. So contrary to popular belief, you could do it every week and your field will last uh, fewer years. Um, so. The uh, idea is to have it done once a month. That'll be done um, soon. It'll be done by a vendor and not us because uh, we, during the uh, school day, we normally are not granted the time to properly maintain it. Um, it takes about eight hours to groom the field. And uh, during the school day, they use that field for gym classes. So my staff have routinely uh, kicked off these fields during the day. So the uh, using a vendor um, we will probably have them do it at night under the lights as opposed to doing it during the day that doesn't mean there won't be some conflicts because there will be but um, that's why we're looking at a once a month schedule to do this yeah I totally understand the once a month I think it was it's also based on the number of times that the field is used during the month I think there's a recommendation on how many times it's used I just know right now that the kids are slipping because there's piles of, of turf. Um, I My son is a player, my husband's a coach, um, so lots of turf comes home in our house. Yeah. Uh, it's everywhere, um, but I'm more worried about the slipping. <laughs> I, can, I, I literally vacuum every day. I'll bring you a whole pile, a whole bag of it. That, that rubber infill is supposed to be right to the tops of the blades, um, so that's that's somewhat normal but I'll take a look at it I'll see what we can do that'll be great thank you so much yes dr. Reed and thank you thank you mr. Diptola appreciate that update I'm sorry mr. Diptola just another question is there even a connection between the raking and slipperiness or is that not not that we've been made aware of okay um, but if you if you get spots where the infill is heavier and that's normal sometimes you have to redistribute it um, there may be places that are are somewhat slippery but that's you know that normally the kids are wearing you know shoes that prevent that but um, it's worth looking into thank you 
Anything else? Okay, again, thank you, Mr. Deptula. Thank you, Superintendent Belizzi, for your updates. And now I just have a few announcements. Did, does Carrie have an update? Oh, no. Anyone else before I go on? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. So on Monday, April 1st, we have an instructional committee meeting, and that is at 6 p.m. via Google Meet. On Monday, April 15th, there's an operations committee. Uh, via Google Meet, also at 6 p.m. And the, the date of our next meeting here in um, the town hall is on April 22nd, and that is at 6.30 p.m. And with no other, uh, with nothing else to come before this board, I would like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 And with that, we are done for this evening. Thank you so much.